Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa. I read and welcome to my channel and today I have some historical romance recommendations for you. I already made this video but I have even more recommendations for you so I thought I would get through these. If you don't know, historical romance is basically a romance set in a historical setting. The type of historical romances I usually read are usually set during the Regency era or the Victorian era in England. But there's other um, different types of historical romances. Sometimes they're medieval, sometimes they're viking, sometimes they're gilded where they're set in America. So there's lots of different types. But I have some options here for you so let's just get to the list. So the first one I have for you is The Duke I Once Knew by Olivia Drake. This one I listened to on audiobook and we're following Abigail Linton and Maxwell Bryce. Maxwell he's a duke and Abigail she's actually a spinster. So this is a second chance romance and they knew each other growing up and they both actually really loved each other so much but there was a misunderstanding. Um, they assumed that they would be together at some point but something happened that drifted them apart and they both hate each other. They blame the other for this miscommunication. Many, many, many years later, Abigail, she has become a spinster. She just, this is kind of the life she kind of fell into. Her parents got really ill and so she was tasked to take care of them. And then after their passing, her siblings who are all married and have kids, they kind of want her to live with them and help them raise their children and kind of be um, a pivotal part of the family. But Ab Abigail has other plans. She kind of wants to strike out on her own. She has always been the helper and she never really did anything for herself. So she decides to take a job as a governess at Maxwell Bryce's estate. So he's a duke now at the neighboring estate and she just decides to apply for this position. And she decides to do it because she thinks that he will never show up, he's never in the countryside and so she felt she feels like there's no chance of him ever coming there and interacting with her so she decides to take the job and she's really looking forward to it and I think it's either his sister or her his guardian or something like that like her niece his niece or something Maxwell doesn't plan to show up at his estate because he has a lot of bad memories there but his carriage gets broken down he was on his way to a fight with some friends um, he has a mistress with him um, and so they end up staying at his estate and that's where himself and Abigail they meet once again and it's about them coming to terms with their feelings um, possibly feelings that they've had ongoing um, and they get to understand the miscommunication um, that happened in, t in the beginning and so I don't know I just really liked this one I think I really gravitated towards Abigail because she was such a strong heroine and I just really like admired her for striking out on her own and not um, letting her family not abuse her but just like convince her to stay with them in order to use her for their own purposes and I just like how headstrong she was and she definitely like stood up to Maxwell a lot. I just, I don't know, I just really enjoyed this one so I definitely recommend it. The next one that I really loved was Duchess by Day, Mistress by Night by Stacey Reed. Um, I need to read more by Stacey, Stacey Reed. This is the only one I've read so far but I really, really liked it. And we're following Georgiana. She's a duchess and Mr. Rice or Reese Tremaine. Mr. Tremaine. So she's a duchess but her husband passed and it was one of these marriages where it was not for love. It was just for title and prestige and she didn't mind doing that because she felt the duty to her family and so she agreed to marry him and they she did mother a child. Um, but her husband passes because he was a lot older than her and now she's on her own. She's a widow and she's just kind of living through the motions, you know, um, she's a really good mother to her son um, and that's kind of her main focus is kind of training him in the role as, as Duke because he's the new Duke. But something's kind of off and her brother of all people kind of convinces her to maybe think about taking on a lover to kind of like spice up her life. But there's a bit of mystery in this one or suspense because um, one of her maids goes missing. She inquires 
Mr. Tremaine's help because he's a self-made man and he works in the darker side of London or the underground side of London. He trades secrets and he got in this line of work because his family, he was, his family passed like his parents and they were always on hard times and so he kind of like got into this line of work um, because he had to. It was essential and he has sisters that he loves and needs to take care of. Um, and so he made a name for himself. He's notorious in the underground part of London and he has developed a lot of wealth doing this line of work. So she, with I think her brother's assistance, inquires after um, Mr. Tremaine to see if he can investigate. And then this, this um, situation ends up involving her son. And so Tremaine and Georgiana kind of form this relationship. He does end up helping her with um, her son who ends up actually going missing. And she helps with his daughters come into society. And they develop a relationship on the side too. I just really liked it because I like reading um, The Underside of London. I just find it really interesting and I just like how they fell for each other and how they just really needed each other um, during these stressful situations and I just really liked it so I do recommend it. The next one is The Princess and the Peer by Tracy Ann Warren. This was a fun one because um, our heroine is a princess of like a small English country. She is supposed to marry someone that her brother chooses. Um, and she knows it's part of her duty. So she is willing to do it, but as a last hurrah, she decides to kind of run away. Um, the state was close to London, and so, like, the state that they were staying in, so she kind of, like, walks to London <laughs> on her own. And she, um, gets bit in a scuffle, and our hero, Nick Gregory, or who's an earl, kind of saves her and takes her home, and she tells him that she's a governess out of work, and he takes pity on her, and she ends up staying with him, and they have some nice outings in London, and she's just really enjoying her time, but as they get to know each other, they really grow closer together. I really liked his character, because he was a captain, and and because of his, I think, duty to the country, he got this earldom. Like, he became an earl because of his service. But the people, the people who serve him were, like, his soldiers. So they're kind of a little bit rough and tumble, which is kind of funny. Like, the butler is, like, maybe missing an arm or something like that. And, like, doesn't have the proper etiquette quite yet. So it was kind of fun. And... You know, it's a bit of star-crossed lovers or forbidden romance because she's a princess and he's just an earl, not quite the right person for her. And I just really like this one, so I recommend it. The next one is a bit of a stretch because it is a YA story. So um, forgive me if you're not into YA stories, but I had to include it because when I read this, for one thing, I really, really liked it. And I couldn't help but feel like it read like a historical romance, The Beholder by Anna Bright. So in this one, we are following Sayla, and she is the daughter of the ruler of her country and it's expected for her to marry and she has someone in mind it was actually her like best friend from growing up and she hasn't said anything to him but I think it's kind of known that they probably will end up together and she was expecting for him to propose to her I think she actually went through her father for the situation for this situation so she was expecting him to say something or propose publicly and she gets rejected and she doesn't know what's going on. Eventually her stepmother, who's kind of like evil, um, tells her, okay, you don't have a husband, you didn't get proposed to, so you need to go on this journey and find a husband. We set up this tour of you for you to meet these different suitors. And so she goes on this journey with the, a really handsome captain and his crewmates. Um, so she gets to know the captain a bit. She goes to a place kind of like England and then she goes to another place kind of like Norway and she just meets these heroes and sees if it's possible to like be with them. Are they a good suitor? And she like falls in love with these men <laughs> right away. And I don't know. I was just like really swept up in it and the fact that it read like a historical romance like it's considered like a YA fantasy. But there's no magical elements at all. It just reads like a historical romance. And she just like falls for these heroes. And at the end, she doesn't choose anyone yet because there is a sequel. I really want to reread this book and then finish the duology. I personally would recommend just 
physically reading it because I listened to it on audiobook and I still really enjoyed it but there was just so many characters that it was hard to keep track of sometimes um but I really really liked it so if you like multiple romances for your heroine you will probably like this. The next one is The Duke and I by Julia Quinn. So I do recommend the first three books of the series. That's all I've read so far. Um, I'm tacking these at the end because I'm sure a lot of people have read these books already. But this one we're following Daphne and Simon. This is what the TV show is based off of. And we're following the Bridgerton family and the series. Each book is a different Bridgerton who has their own love story. And this one we're following Daphne. And I think she's like the oldest daughter. So that's why she is coming out into society. And um, Simon is Daphne's brother's friend from university and they kind of have like a fake dating or fake courtship because she really wants to marry well and he wants all the ladies or like all the mothers off her off his back. And so they make this agreement that if they are shown if he shows interest in her then it will encourage the other suitors to maybe take notice of Daphne and then he gets the advantage of not being pursued by any other woman so and it's about them they end up having a marriage of convenience because of a bit of a scandal that happens in here and Simon has a lot of trauma in his past he was not loved by his father and he was basically rejected by him and he grew up having a stutter so he has a he had a lot of obstacles to overcome throughout this novel that does affect the marriage um there is a bit of a controversial scene in here a bit of dubious consent in here so know that going in um, if that may bother you but that is in here but I still really like this story a lot and the second one is the Viscount who loved me this one I'm following Antony this is what season two is based off of and Antony he is the Earl the current Earl of the Bridgerton and he hasn't found a match yet the heroine is Kate and it's basically I think just her and her sister and she is just focused on her younger sister her younger sister um, it's kind of like the beauty and Kate is a little bit older and so she just decided that this is the season that this is the last chance for them to come out to society and hopefully find a match and she's just basically decided to really focus all her energy on her sister. It's become known that Antony, who is a rake, has his sights on her, on her sister and she does not like this idea because of his reputation and she just really wants um, her sister to marry well and someone good for her and not just for the title but for love as well. Um, and so Antony and Kate really butt heads a lot. Um, they have some really comical encounters um, and it's definitely a hate to love romance and it's about them coming together and falling in love so I do recommend that one as well. And the last one which is actually my favorite so far of the series is An Offer from a Gentleman. This one is a Cinderella retelling and Sophie is our Cinderella and she is actually a daughter of an earl but her, her father dies and her stepmother treats her horribly basically treats her as a servant and she acts as a, like she does servant work um, and I think they're on hard times financially and so they basically abuse the situation um, in order to save funds but one day while her stepmother and sisters are out the servants help her get dressed for a ball. Um, I think it's a masquerade and they work together to get her a gown and everything and so she goes and she has this like beautiful moment with Benedict and they just have this really romantic evening together and he doesn't know who she is and obviously she runs away. And the thing that's interesting about the story is just like half the story is the Cinderella part and then the other half is a brand new addition to the story because she does end up getting kicked out. By her stepmother and so she has to go find work and then she does get reacquainted with Benedict but he doesn't know it's her from that night and it's about her getting to know Benedict more it's also about her getting to know his family I really like this one for some reason I was just like so obsessed with it Benedict just falls for Sophie so hard um, and I do recommend it. So that's it. I hope you liked this video. I'd love to know if you've read any of these books before. If you have, comment down below. 
I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions about them. If you have any historical romance recommendations, I would love to receive them because I love this genre so much. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. If you have not done so, you can follow me on Goodreads and Instagram. And you know what? I want you to keep reading. Bye.